we are continuing in the book, uh, The Seven Stages of Creation. We're on day number seven in the book. And our scripture is Isaiah chapter 45 and verse number seven. I form the light and create the darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. And again, that's Isaiah chapter 45 and verse number 7. Our backdrop scripture for today is Genesis chapter 3, verses 8 through 13. And today our subject is blame keeps you the same. That's right, I said it. Blame keeps you the same. I'm going to say it one more time. Blame keeps you the same. And so when we are looking at the creation, because remember, we're made in the image and likeness of God. And so we are creators and we are creative because we are made in the image and likeness of God. And so God in the scripture in Isaiah took total, complete, absolute, and full responsibility for all of God's creation. He said, I create the light and the darkness, the good and the evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. And so since we're made in the image and likeness of God uh, to be creative, we're also made in the image and likeness of God to be responsible for that which we have created. And we've been studying these seven uh, steps or stages of creation, silence thoughts, words, actions, manifestation, evaluation, and progression. You remember those stages? Silence, thoughts, words, actions, manifestation, evaluation, and progression. Yes, those are those seven stages of being. Did you do your seven minutes of silence today? Did you create your day in your mind, go through your calendar, your itinerary, and everything that you have to do today? Did you create it in mind first so that it can manifest in matter? Um, I know I did it today. I took that time to breathe and to be in the stillness and the silence, realizing that I am a creator, realize that I am creative because I'm made in the image and likeness of God. Did you do your anoint your head with oil today? Uh, did you check your cup, cup check, cup check to make sure it was full and running over? Well, today we are looking at the blame game. The blame game keeps you the same. And as long as you are blaming, you are recreating the same thing over and over and over again. Because whenever you're blaming somebody else for what's going on in your life, the energy that you're using to blame them, you're not using that energy to go into the silence. The energy that you're using to blame someone else, you're not using that energy to think about what it is that you do desire to create. As long as you are blaming somebody else, you are not using your energy to speak that which you do desire. As long as you are blaming someone else, you are not taking action to create the life that you desire and the life that you deserve. As long as you are blaming someone else, you are keeping yourself from manifesting the good desires of your heart. So blame keeps you the same. So what I invite you to do is just forgive people release it and let it go and move on to use your power, to use your authority, to use your creativity, to create the life because life is creatable. Life is not fixed. Life is creatable and you can co-create with God the life that you desire and the life that you deserve. And so use that energy, channel that energy where you want to blame your father, your mother, your sister, your brother, your cousin, blame uh, race and culture and the president and blame the company and the community and blame all these people for what's going on in your life. I'm asking you to redistribute that energy and channel that energy where you are blaming to use that energy to co-create with God the life that you desire and the life that you deserve. Channel that energy into the silence. Channel that energy into your thinking. Channel that energy into your speaking, your actions, your manifestation, your evaluation, and your progression. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a high five. Give me a heart if you're taking responsibility for your life and everything that you have created. And if you are going to channel that energy 
into creating as opposed to blaming because blame keeps you the same. As long as you are blaming others, you're playing that blame game, you are recreating more of the same thing. You're keeping yourself in the wilderness. You're keeping yourself going around in circles as long as you are blaming others. You are keeping yourself on the merry-go-round as long as you are blaming others. The script says, I, the Lord, take responsibility. I created it all. And many times when it's something positive, we stick our chest out. Yes, I got that degree. Yes, I got that promotion. Yes, I brought that house. Yes, I brought that car. Whenever it's something positive, we desire to take responsibility for it. But if it appears to be negative, if it doesn't appear to be the best thing since sliced butter and bread, that's often where the subconscious phase of mind desires to blame somebody else. And I'm inviting you to take responsibility for your life, the good, the bad, the ugly. Take responsibility for it all. Follow God's direction. Follow God's leadership and say, I create it all. And so let's dig deeper into what it means to really. And some of y'all, you may get a different picture of God today. So I'm anointing my head to be open and receptive to divine unlimited ideas. There's only one power and one presence in my life. And that is God, the good omnipotence. And so we're looking at um, blame keeps you the same. And we're looking at taking responsibility for our creation, for our entire life. I created it. And because I created it, that means I can change it. If I don't like what's going on in my experience, then I can change my thought. If I don't like what's going on in my life, then I can change my mind. When I change my mind, I change my life. When I change my thoughts, I change my experience. So that's the benefit of taking responsibility is that you can change it. I created it and I can change it. Pulley point number one, humanity. God created Adam and Eve and God took responsibility for creating Adam and Eve. Even though they ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, even though they were disobedient for, to God, God said, I created Adam and Eve. Adam represents our thinking and Eve represents our feeling. So all of us have Adam and Eve in us. All of us have thoughts and all of us have feelings. And God is saying, I created humanity. I created Adam and Eve. It is, I made you. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. And so God says, I take responsibility for humanity because I created humanity. I created Adam, the thinking nature. I created Eve, the feeling nature. I created it all. I created them in my image, in my likeness. And I told them to be fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue, and have dominion. I gave them dominion over the fish of the sea. I gave them dominion over the birds of the air. I gave them dominion over all the animals that are creeping on the land. So God took full responsibility for creating human beings. So whatever human beings did, God said, I created it because I created human beings. Are you able to follow God and to take responsibility for the Adams? in your life that think those thoughts and for the ease in your life, those feelings. I take responsibility for all of my thoughts. I take responsibility for all of my feelings that I created it all. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a high five. Give me a heart because many times we desire to blame somebody else. And as long as you're paying the blame game, it is keeping you the same. The blame game keeps you the same. What produces change, what produces growth, what produces healing, what produces spiritual unfoldment is you taking responsibility. When you stand before God, this is what my grandmother used to say, God is only going to ask you about you. God is not going to ask you about what anybody else said, what anybody else did, what anybody else didn't do. God is only going to ask you about you. So you are responsible for you. All of it. And whatever's going on in your life. I'm responsible for Adam and I'm responsible for Eve. I'm responsible for humanity, God said. And so what is it that you've created? What are the thoughts that you've created? Can you take responsibility for them? What are the feelings that you've experienced? Can you take responsibility for them? Because the blame game keeps me the same. If you desire to change, you got to take responsibility. Pulley point number two. Not only did God take responsibility for Adam and Eve, pulley point number two, 
Um, God took responsibility for all the trees. Pulley point number one was humanity, Adam and Eve. Pulley point number two are the trees. Yes, God created all the trees. The tree of knowledge of good and evil, God created it. The tree of life, God created that. So God said, I created it all. People often talk about um, the whole Garden of Eden experience. God created the whole thing. God created the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and God created the tree of life. God created it all. Will you take responsibility for all the trees in your life? Will you take responsibility for those that give life? Will you take responsibility for those that give you a lesson? The tree of the knowledge of good and evil, it just means it's a lesson that you needed to learn. It didn't say the tree of good and evil. It said the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So we're constantly choosing between the tree of life, which is the blessing, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which is the lesson. I'm going to say that again. We are always back in the Garden of Eden, choosing between the tree of life, which is the blessing, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which is the lesson. So you're always experiencing a lesson and or a blessing. And so God set up the whole scenario. God created the Garden of Eden. God put them in the garden. God put the tree of knowledge of good and evil there. And God put the tree of life there in the garden. So God created the whole situation. We're talking about Adam, that Adam should have rebuked his wife. And we're talking about Eve, that she should have never gave the fruit to her husband. God said, I created it all. What about God who put the trees in there in the first place? What about God who created the tree of life? What about God who created the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and put them in the garden? God said, I created it all. For our souls unfolding, for our growth. God said, I created it all. Can you worship God knowing that God created it all? That I'm not blaming Adam, I'm not blaming Eve, but I'm looking back to God and saying God created the whole thing. Because when you can worship God in spirit and truth, knowing that God created the whole thing, then you're able to also fully accept yourself as saying, I created everything in my life. If you got two gods, because many people, they got two gods, the good God, Jehovah, that creates all the good stuff, and then the bad God, the devil, that creates all the challenging stuff. But the scripture says, I read it, Isaiah 45 and 7. It says, I form the light and create the darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, does all these things. I only have one God. And that one God is the source of everything in my life. I don't worship two gods. And I get scared when people are praying to God and they stop and start rebuking the devil and binding demons. Who are you praying to? Who is your God? I worship God. So whatever is going on in my life, whatever is going on in my garden of Eden, Eden, whether I'm eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, having a lesson, or whether I'm eating from the tree of life, it is all God and it is all good. All right. The blame game keeps you the same. Are you growing? Are you changing? Are you healing or are you staying the same? The blame game keeps you the same. Look at what happened with Adam and Eve. When God called them to responsibility for what they did, Adam played the blame game and said that Eve, that woman that you gave me, she made me eat from the tree. And then Eve played the blame game and said, the serpent beguiled me and deceived me, and therefore I ate. They were not able to take responsibility for their actions. The day that they, as soon as they ate that fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they didn't get banned from the garden right away. God had a conversation with them first to see if they were going to take responsibility for their actions. I know people don't like this, but let me say this. They were not immediately expelled from the garden in the story. God said to Adam, where are you? Where are you? And he said, I was hiding myself because I was naked. Who told you that you were naked? They were having a conversation with God, but when they were not able to take responsibility, when Adam blamed Eve and Eve blamed the serpent, that's when God said, you got to go. <laughs> that's when God said, you got to go because you are playing the blame game, which is going to cause you to create more of the same. But I believe if they would have took responsibility, if Adam would have said, you know what, 
I ate of that tree. If Eve would have said, you know what? I ate of that tree. If they had taken responsibility for themselves in the garden, I believe that they have uh, um, had the ability to be redeemed, to be reconciled, to be restored. But because they played the blame game, they had to get kicked out. They had to get put out of the garden because neither one of them was taking responsibilities for their actions. And many times we play that same blame game like Adam and Eve, and we're blaming somebody else for what's going on in your life. Nobody made you eat that food. Nobody made you tell that lie. Nobody made you commit that crime. Nobody can make you do anything. So take responsibility for your life. People say, did they put a gun to your head? Even if they did put a gun to your head, you can make a decision. If I die, let me die. But I'm going to see the king. You are responsible for your life. You are res The blame game keeps you the same. And that's why God put Adam and Eve out of the garden because he said, y'all going to keep doing the same thing. You didn't learn your lesson. You didn't take responsibility for your actions. You lying and hiding and blaming. And God said, y'all got to go. Y'all not ready for this level of consciousness in the Garden of Eden. So you got to go. And so then Jesus comes as the second Adam and gives us the opportunity to go back to the Garden of Eden and experience that perfect life, that perfect love, that perfect health, those perfect relationships, and that perfect wealth. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a high five. Give me a heart. If you're done with playing the game, the blame game, throw your hand and say, I'm done with playing the blame game. I take responsibility for my life. I'm not going to be like Adam and blame Eve. I'm not going to be like Eve and blame the serpent. I'm going to be like God and take responsibility for it all. So pulling point number one is humanity. Both Adam and Eve, God took responsibility for the creation. Pulling point number two, trees. God took responsibility for the trees. I created the tree of the life and I created the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Pulling point number three, God set up the whole circumstance, the whole scenario. God set it up. God gave him the command. Instead of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, don't eat that. Because <laughs> the day that you eat it, you're going to surely die. And he also gave them the choice. You know once you tell people don't do something, they're going to want to do it more. God set up the whole scenario and said, I gave the command not to eat of the tree. And I set up and gave them choice for them to be able to decide for themselves what it is that they were going to do. So God took responsibility for the whole shebang. Can you take responsibility for the whole shebang in your life? Can you take responsibility for everything? Your thoughts, your feelings, your experiences, your health, your relationships, your wealth. Let me say this. I tell people that sometimes I apologize and ask forgiveness, and I know I didn't do a thing wrong. But you know what? I'm going to end the cycle by taking responsibility. Please forgive me. Forgive me. I released this situation and let it go. I ask for forgiveness because I'm able to take responsibility. I'm the one having this experience. So I take responsibility for it and I say, forgive me, which means that I'm releasing this situation and I'm letting it go. I'm responsible. Well, they said this and they did that. And if they hadn't said this and if they hadn't done that, that I wouldn't be in this situation. I would be. You need to rise up and realize that you created it all. Get the lesson and the blessing from the experience. Forgive yourself, forgive them, release it and let it go and move forward. The blame game keeps you the same. That's what kept them in the wilderness for those 40 years. They were blaming Moses. They were blaming Pharaoh. They kept blaming, they were blaming God. They were blaming everything and everybody, but taking responsibility for themselves. The blame game keeps you the same. If you desire to change, you must take responsibility for your life, for your world, and for your affairs. Follow God's direction. Follow God's example. Say, I created it all. Go back and read Isaiah again. Isaiah 45 and verse 7. He said, I created it all. And when you rise up in Christ consciousness, when you mature, you begin to stop the blame game and take responsibility for everything that's going on in your life. I love you so much. Thank you so much for being a part of the daily download.